Israel is pretty good at hacking, defending against attacks by nearby nations from day one. Since then, it has developed into a cyber superpower. They never wait for the enemy to strike first. Instead, they attack first to access the enemy's intentions and stop them before they can ever begin. Israel spies on both his allies and enemies. After China and Russia, it has been listed as the third most hostile actor towards the United States. Today, in addition to protecting their own country, Israeli businesses can sell off-the-shelf hacking tools to businesses willing to pay a premium for nation-state-level cyber capabilities. Several Iranian and Syrian nuclear sites were demolished by Israeli hacking teams. Israel, which has a population of 9 million and is surrounded by its Arab enemies. Israel came into being in 1948. Despite this, they have developed incredible hacking skills. Today we look at how Israel emerges as a cyberpower despite its small size. Today Israel is so powerful in hacking technologies. But it was not always like this. The Yom Kippur War, in which Egypt and Syria invaded Israel, was the worst intelligence blunder in Israeli history. Israel had lost its territory during this conflict, which he later reclaimed. Israel's entire military and political leadership resigned as a result of this disgrace. At this moment, Israel knew that if they were to survive, they would have to take extreme measures. As a consequence of these developments, Unit 8200, which now numbers between 5,000 and 10,000 people, emerged as one of Israel's largest units. It provides the Mossad, CHIBE, and other specialist groups with 50% of all Israel's intelligence. They use both direct and indirect hacking techniques to project their area dominance. Consider the unconventional bombing campaign against important nuclear plants. As you are aware, every home in Israel is required to serve in the military. After retiring from the military, you can go to college or start your own business. Israel started accessing its school students. The IDF is like one big HR department for the country. Every year, around 60,000 students are selected for military access into different units based on school grades, personality, and IQ tests. Students with high scores are sent to Unit 8200, and the low scores are sent to police. In Unit 8200, students have only one purpose, to gather more and more intelligence. You must not only earn good grades to be accepted into Unit 8200, but you must also perform well on tests of problem-solving and creativity. There are several subunits, and even more subtopics, doubt the correct team be assigned to them. Students' coding abilities are checked in the first phase, and it is best if the student is a self-learner. They examine if students can come up with original ideas in challenging circumstances. Students participate in a six-month mental boot camp where they learn project management, programming, Arabic, and intelligence tradecraft. One can access Unit 8200 once they pass this test. There's four key traits that technological units like 8200 look for. Chutzpah, being daring and willing to do what no one else is. Rosh Gedol, assuming responsibility and acting with initiative, even if it requires extra work, since you can see the larger picture. Mitzvah, being resourceful in completing tasks. Dafka, acting in spite of a circumstance and purposefully rubbing it in. Just getting the best people is half the battle. They must be placed in the proper atmosphere, and you must work out a way to keep that talent. Students are required to serve in the military and do not come to this school of their own free will. And everyone who acquires technical skills leaves as soon as they can. So it is necessary for Unit 8200 to retain more and more people. Unit 8200 has a pretty straightforward plan of action for this. The Unit 8200 doesn't spend any more time rounding tedious studies, Making these kids fully capable flag hackers is Unit 8200's main goal. For this, each team is led by an accomplished coder, and all students are divided into small groups. Following this, participants are given practical assignments, like learning how to hack into someone's laptop, automobile, or phone. Sometimes it starts to resemble working for a tech firm, more than it does being in the military. Students who shine in both talent and teamwork are chosen and advanced to the next stage, when they take part in real missions. They understand the significance of what they are doing. They totally accepted the notion that their actions count and that providing the correct intelligence can make the difference between life and death for individuals. After going through this entire procedure, their compulsory service is complete and they can now decide whether to stay in the military or not. Those who leave find jobs in the private corporate sector with the help of Israel government. This brings two advantages. 
The first is that it makes Israel's private hacking sector stronger and enables government agencies to work directly with them. The second reason is that after graduating from Unit 8200, students have many job options in the private sector. Therefore, each year, more and more students attempt to join Unit 8200. Interesting thing is that before leaving Unit 8200, students are assigned the task to train newcomers. On the other hand, those who decided to stay in Unit 8200 are assigned more important tasks. This process is also important because every country has equal cybersecurity technologies. A key differentiating factor is all about how you organize human capital and improve skills, and that's where Israel wins. Every day, students have to face different kinds of challenges. Every time, they have to perform hacking in different ways, and this increases their skills. Students who enter private businesses find their seniors from Unit 8200 in executive roles. This builds trust. So they are excited to do something big, which means that no matter how big any company gets, they remain energetic like a startup company. Israel intelligence agencies like Mossad are also dependent on these private companies because every year they make new software and find loopholes in enemy states. In addition, these businesses sell their software to other nations, which helps Israel maintain positive relations with these nations and win special favors from them politically. Muslim nations, which were formerly intended to be Israel's rivals, are now engaging in significant trade with the Jewish state. Israel's Pegasus software is used in other nations. This is Israel's success story. What do you think makes Israel so skilled at hacking? And can other nations copy the Israeli approach? If you like this video, please let me know in the comments section below. Share with your friends and colleagues. I sincerely appreciate you watching and I hope to see you soon.